Uh, my name is Adam uh, Shopcorn, Fort Gansvore Gallery. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for coming to see Lee Quinones and Patrick Martinez. Um, super excited to have um, Patrick and his work at, at the gallery. Super excited to have uh, Lee at Fort Gansvore. Lee, I actually, I was, I was just uh, saying I met, I think, in... 99, um, we have a mutual friend, and he was painting uh, down on Eldridge Street, the side of um, the side of my friend's building. Um, and I and I obviously had n known about Lee. Um, growing up in New York, I grew up in the Bronx, and I was very interested in graffiti. I think we come from a little bit of a different generation. I think I'm closer to Patrick, but someone told me you're the world's uh, oldest teenager. Oldest teenager. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a pleasure having you guys in, um, Lee with, pa Patrick, uh, works with Charlie James Gallery in Los Angeles, um, and Charlie and I worked with a couple of the, the same artists, and, um, yeah, and Lee just had a show out in Los Angeles, so it seemed, it, it just seemed, and Dan Cameron, uh, spent some time here looking at the work we do, so it just seemed right to, um, Ask Lee to come in to do a casual talk. Um, so thank you all for, for coming here. And yeah, I hope uh, if you haven't had a chance to get upstairs to the third floor, please do um, after our talk. And um, yeah, so so I wanted to, um, interestingly enough, I don't, I don't know much about, um, I started to ask Patrick about two hours ago. Um, I said, so like, did you write graffiti? Or like, did you look at graffiti? Because I was talking to Lucy, um, and and uh, did your brother write graffiti? Were you watching him write graffiti? So so I guess, uh, and then Patrick started to tell me, and I said, you know what, like, just 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 keep me in the, yeah, just keep me in the dark until we yeah. talk. So what, if you don't mind. It's, it's a, one, of, one of the, uh, you know, when I start, first started doing art, it was more direct. When I first started, it was pencil and paper, um, pen and paper, and that's like the mo you know the quickest way you can get it in, you know, material-wise. And then when I was 12 years old, I started doing graffiti, and I was more interested in trying to manipulate the paint. And I would like go to yards um, and just try to, you know, on the cement uh, walls, I would try to like figure out how to do it. And uh, my entry point, you know, that I picked up spray paint before I started painting like this, you know, with uh, house paint or, you know, acrylic paints. And my entry point to that was subway art and spray can art. And that's, you know, even seeing Lee in some of those books as, uh, in middle school, you know, it's just kind of like blew my mind. And I saw the things that I was drawing on pieces of paper on the side of subways or on the walls. So, you know, there was multiple kind of connections, and, um, you know, kind of lit up because there's so many different things I enjoyed about it. You know, it's kind of a re renegade art also, and there was a subculture. Um, not that I was trying to like, you know, yeah, I'm going to get into it because of that is just, you know, later on it just was all that, um, you know, it was community, it was friends, it was a lot of things. So I did do graffiti and I was doing, a, you know, a lot of it in the arts and my brother was doing it, and all my friends were doing it, like, you know, just in the 90s, early 90s. And, uh, you know, uh, people were just at different levels of creating, you know, like, you know, my, friend, my, my brother was more tagging than anything. I was more interested in trying to put together pictures on the wall. My friends did, you know, both. Um, so it was always around. It was something that uh, informs, you know, like, some of the work now, you know, but more in a productive form and um, manipulating materials that aren't supposed to be used for art making is interesting to me. And I always try to, try to, you know, um, you know, try to um, just look, at, yeah, experiment and look at things that aren't, you know, thought of as. Mark Bradford says, like, if you're, sh if you're shopping at the art store for art supplies, you're probably not making anything interesting. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just, it, it, it made me, you know, kind of uh, get into the, uh, the materials that I was using, and that was like a, a springboard. 
you know, he, he beat me to the punch. I was going to ask you. Yeah. First of all, <laughs> I, your I was like, first of all, I'm, I'm very floored by your show. Thank you for coming to New York. The show is welcome. Welcome to New York. Um, they're beautiful. They're beautiful pieces. And I was like, you know, I'm not going to, I know very little of you. To be honest, yeah, I didn't yeah. want to go on, you know, on yeah, the yeah, screen yeah. and like make, make, it, make it look like I know it all. So let me just just start off from point A with you. And one of the first questions I was going to ask, like, hey, have you been uh, influenced or involved, with, you know, graffiti making yeah. at some point? Yeah. So I, I and I could see that happening very easily in LA because of the, you know, uh, the, the mural culture there right. was so strong for so many years. Yeah. Whereas here on the, you know, in the subways, this movement about tagging and getting your name up is basically ends the end game is mural making. Right. You know, so right. the same That's thing. That's what evolved into. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. So I was going to ask you that, just like that, that it was that one of your views, you know, aside from the city of LA, was like, see this community. Uh, that too, yeah. Sense. I mean, it's, it's weird when I was uh, first starting college, I started like, you know, I've always seen the murals I knew. Um, mostly graffiti dudes that were doing murals around the area, but also just like, you know, community murals, you know, and seeing those, and they're still kind of like, uh, inform my work, those types of uh, community art, that community aesthetic. But, um, you know, I, I, um, I, I worked at uh, the Streetscaper studio for about a year helping them paint murals, and they had interior uh, pieces. Street, street, streetscapers, these piece little streetscapers. So they're 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 the guys like if you open a mural book they'll they'll probably it's like Wayne Healy and David Botello. And okay. I, and I help them put together. Um, or you know like I would help them. They would pay me like ten bucks an hour. Or an hour. <laughs> yeah, and I yeah. would just go at it in their studio and paint mm -hmm. um, little sections of giant murals. Um, they were doing um, they're bringing the canvas inside so they can work on it for hours and then they would install the canvas outside. So it was a Santa Monica mural. Right. But um, yeah, I mean it's everywhere. You know, so it's, yeah, it's, it's all levels of that public art. And, uh, yeah, it's a good entry point. I think, you know, just, you know, can I just add? Can you guys? I've never sat here actually, but can you guys hear us back there? No, okay, we need to speak a lot louder. Okay. I've always, I've, I've you can I've always, sit on the stairs too. I'm clear my throat. I've yeah, always yeah, wanted to provide an acoustic experience in here without uh, plugs. Um, so, so I hope that doesn't backfire on us, but we'll try to try to speak up. Um, yeah, but this is an un unplugged session. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was just going to ask, like, how much time um, growing up in, and, and with what, what you were doing um, early on, I know, I know you, you, know, you were you're a New Yorker, you spent, you, you spent time here, but did you spend any time on the West Coast? Um, like, did you write any graffiti? Did you, like, hit any trains, like, freights, any of that stuff? This is my naivete, not knowing. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, uh, that, my my moving object era had already finished in 1984. So, by 1984, both practicing my craft in the studio and painting subways, I just felt that, that I, I, at that point, I had exhausted everything that I wanted to say on it on a moving object or train. Um, and so I never thought of moving, it, quite honestly, at that time. I mean, a few years before 1984, 1979 was the turning point for a number of things. I didn't realize that this could become and is the largest global art movement in history, arguably, because it has influenced so many young talents from everywhere. So. Uh, I never thought of going outside of New York to paint anything even moving and more ex exciting uh, because I just thought that all the excitement was here, quite honestly, naive. You know, I was sort of like New York landlocked. So I was like, you know, we did, the world was hearing us from outside, you know, the, per the peripheral, you know, the, the audience outside of New York knows that we're here coming Come and see us for yourselves. And, and you know, for a while, uh, the, the work ran on the trains all the way till late 1988, more or less. Wow. And they were gone by 89. And a whole extensive, systematic uh, cleaning program 
uh, cleansing, you know, Agent Orange, whatever you want to call it. So by that time, in 89, funny enough, I'm painting in the studio, but also struggling with trying to explain myself out of the box that people thought I would stay in, which is, are you still painting trains? I'm like, God, I'm 29 years old. Okay. I'm not living with my parents anymore. So, you know, I'm just, you know, you know I, so, uh, you know, and I understand that. I understand the love of like watching and wanting to be in that time, that special time of experimentation and all. But, and they, in, by 19, in the 80s, there was a lot of experimentation going on. Or in conceptual, I mean, people were thinking of doing the most bizarre things on the subways, right. welding parts to the subways and creating interior pieces. I mean, you know, painting the entire Fred, 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 Freddy, and I, we never pulled it off. We were thinking of doing a double whole car, married couple, which is basically uh, two subway cars that are connected forever. By the coupler, they're not disen you know, they, you yeah. can't disengage them. So, and you can tell them by the numbers yeah. 77, 16, 76, 77, 15, that's married couple. So, yeah. they always get, so we're gonna paint two loaves of bread wrapped in all. Conceptually, just wow. think about the shape of a train, yeah. it's like a loaf of bread. Right. And we we're gonna paint the wrapper in the front, and it was gonna be a, a Wonder Fred and a Tastely. So, you know, and that was because Fred was like looking at pop art and, you know, just looking at the, you know, not too many differences between what Andy Wall was doing 20 years before. And, and we, but we never pulled it off. It's one of those things that I really regret we never pulled off. But to answer your question, I mean, I never thought of going to the West Coast. And the first time I went to the West Coast was like 1985. And uh, by then it was already starting to spread enough where people in LA and San Francisco and you know, across the pond, you know, London, primarily in Germany, they were picking it up like wildfire. So. Yeah, Patrick, I was just gonna, while we're sitting here with these um, these cake paintings, these nine cake paintings on the wall, um, when I went to Patrick's studio, um, I, I was quite familiar with the uh, urban landscape paintings, if you, if you will, which are upstairs and which you see uh, a little less of downstairs in his neon work, but I was quite drawn to these um, to these cake paintings. So I asked Patrick for, for the, the show we were doing here if he could expand on um, on, on this body of work and, and um, he delivered. But I, I was wondering just um, if you could talk about the, the, the actual process of of making uh, these paintings, and then Lee, I thought um, you might have some questions. I, I I've always been interested in. Um, <laughs> I've always I, I, I've always been interested in um, you know the, the artists that have you know started with um, spray paint, uh, using spray paint, and then um, what it's like to kind of move into um, different materials and those that. Those that spend a lot of time with spray paint might get stuck in spray paint, or it might be a challenge to move over. So, Patrick, I was wondering if you could tell these guys just kind of like how, how how these are made, um, yeah. and what the process is. So, like with these uh, portraits, um, the first one I probably did in 2013. Um, I did a second one probably in, uh, the following year, or two years later, and then two more. But um, this is like kind of like the first time I've did like a body of, of the, the cake paintings and um, they start out as blank panels they're all on wood like if you could imagine a wood panel just blank and um, I just sew it and um, for these specific pieces I painted them all in my kitchen and it wasn't on purpose it was just like more of an access you know like kind of like an accessibility thing you know when I, when I wanted to get up I would get up get my tea in and you know, shower and then be fresh and ready to paint. And a really intimate kind of you know thing going on when you're painting a portrait. Um, there's a lot of things going on, value, color mixing. Um, you're trying to figure out a, a, a few you know a few things um, all at once. So um, I would sit sit it kind of like like I'm sitting now against uh, you know on a chair and then have another chair here and have it propped up. 
at an angle and I would just go have at it, you know. I would first uh, do the uh, prime or the, the gesso with thick paint, thick gesso paint. And then uh, I would sketch with, uh, you know, paint, uh, burnt sienna. And then uh, go, go in with my darks, my blacks, and then uh, dark to light uh, paint it, uh, paint the portrait. And I'm not projecting or tracing, so I'm, I'm drawing every everything and trying to work, work the uh, portrait out. And um, I did all these paintings plus the ones downstairs and all the work you see here probably in seven months. So I was working every day. So waking up, going to the kitchen, you know, it's like it was like a ritual almost. And, and the next, you know, then I started looking at, oh, wow, like there's a, there's a, um, you know, there's, there's a stove next to, you know, where I'm painting. So it's like, um, it was, it was a weird thing. And I started putting it in like, oh, my fucking kitchen and baking. <laughs> I mean, you know, like, I don't know how to cook or bake or anything, but I was doing it in my own way, I guess. Um, but so the, the portrait's done. I, I set it up at the same angle. Then I airbrush, uh, transparent uh, airbrush on top. And then um, I lay it down flat and start uh, decorating with the heavy body acrylic. And I put, you know, the, that heavy body acrylic in like the cake frosters. And I'll just have that in building like textures and, you know. Um, and, it, and it's um, added, the, the last touch is like, you know, like uh, the, um, the, the plate that it sits on, the gold plate is, is adhered to the, to, to the back of it. And then uh, roses that are handmade ceramic roses um, that are attached also and then you know just touch up some paint and then the gloss or the satin finish um, but I enjoy the way this is all set up because this is actually how I started the paint you know like it, it started out like at this angle and then also downstairs and upstairs you'll see them flat which is another way that I painted them too so um, a big conversation we had when we were, you know, displaying all this work, is like, how do these things get displayed? Are they sculpture? Are they painting? I've had collectors come visit me, and they don't even know, like, how do I, how do I put this in my home? Like, how, how do you see it? And I just said, well, I mean, you know, you could hang it up or you could lay it down. So, I mean, that's how I painted it, so you can do the work. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. How old are you? I'm 38. You're 38. And yeah. you grew up in which which part of? I, I grew up in uh, San Gabriel Valley, Pasadena area. Okay. Um, but then moved around Montebello, east, east of Los Angeles, things like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because these these are fabulous. What comes to me first? I mean, first of all, the ones that are iconic and the ones you know, the, these are beautiful. I mean, these are a best kept secret, like finally coming to to life. Because I'm like, wow, I never knew he was making these. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was kind of like. But I was I was definitely aware of your neon pieces, which struck you know it struck up like. It kind of striked uh, a question, sort of a acknowledgement of what I had seen growing up in the hood, mm -hmm. right? Of all these vibrant, uh, very uh, colorful uh, atmospheres that you, you know, the neon signs yeah. in the bodega, yeah, yeah, yeah. liquor stores, store things like that, yeah. right? And you notice that liquor stores are strategically placed. Or they find yeah, that there's yeah. a market wherever yeah. there may be some poverty, so that people yeah. can then you know just get their, their yeah. drink going on. But the colors that attract you to that yeah. uh, are there, and I'm just wondering, like with these, I want to ask you later about the, the neon. But with these, I, were those colors, um, the the choice of colors, I mean, the, the portraits are striking. James yeah. Baldwin, I mean, Axon, uh, you know, sitting bull, but with the did you were you exposed to those that type of color saturation like yeah up? I think it's like it's from you know it, there's a, it's like also a nod to graffiti and the color but then also um, in all my work I feel like it's a community aesthetic and I'm interested in like, accessibility and people looking at things that, or when they look at my work they, they see it like that it's a familiar thing you know like whether it's that storefront sign that you grew up with like being on the corner or, um, um, you know, like a sheet cake that you had at one of your birthdays, or you know what I mean, with a printed picture on there. Um, or just like, you know, like even even the, the landscapes upstairs, it's all part of the, like I'm taking from the surroundings of my community. Mm. And I'm using the materials that actually, um, you know, that exist in the community to make them. Um, mm -hmm. Some of it is just the color too. 
-hmm. and, and a lot of the playfulness in the color comes from just like these cakes that are at these uh, mom and pop uh, cake shops in right. Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, um, and it's just a nod to that, and it's like even like, for me, these cakes, uh, portraits are celebratory portraits, you know. The new kind of portrait, um, the gold frame is to act as a frame that you might see, excuse me, um, something that, you know, like at the National Portrait Gallery with a gold frame, like an old painting or something, right. you know what I mean? But this is like that new, like, kind of like lit kind of, uh, you know, portrait, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Celebrating these people that are, um, you know, discounted in history or just need to be seen. Uh, more, more right. heard about more. Uh, yeah. My my thing is about visibility, you know. Also, mm -hmm. you know, inclusion. And and these are and like you had these people in your they were in your consciousness, like you know, a conscience yeah. over time. Like thinking of Sitting Bull, like did you look into that history to actually yeah i mean a lot of this stuff is just stuff that i've been reading like rebecca solnit like you mm -hmm. know um bell hooks um sitting bull i've known about right. um it's just researching and kind of like uh, painting um their portraits it's when adam came to me last year and he said case so i said yes and i i've been thinking about this you know what i mean and i wanted to paint you know i didn't have all these people in mind already maybe four to five you know, and this, these are things that I've been reading, you know, I've been reading either their books or reading about them and it, it prompted me to want to paint them. Mm. Yeah. And some of them are newer, some of them are older, you know, like uh, the mm -hmm. authors are kind of like, you know, I mean, they're still around sitting bull is, you know, um, you know, long gone. But I mean, you know, it's, it's interesting because it's also a thing that I wanted to, I was conscious about updating. Uh, images of these people because there's only black and white photography in Sitting Bull. I had to create the flesh tone and the color uh -huh. in that portrait right. to, to update it so it's it's here with us now in full color mm. and you know mm. uh, marked with everything else. And then Larry and Mai, I'm the Filipino uh, activist that was sitting right next to uh, Cesar Chavez right. of the United Farm Workers. There's no color photography of him either. Right. So, I'm having to invent some of this stuff just so that it can live with us today uh -huh. and, and, uh -huh. in those the full color. I, I, I off the top of my head the 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 very the sliced, you know, the the, yeah. the parts of the cake that are yeah. taken out uh really have a lot to say about that particular portrait and yeah. in, in many ways. Yeah. Everybody yeah. you know who 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 dug into the cake yeah. before it was before yeah. the ceremony or yeah. the starting of something here. Yeah. Um so, Decom not decomposing, but like going away. Yeah. Because you know how a cake is yeah. sliced and, yeah. and yeah. people I thought that that was, I mean, that's a powerful statement on, and the yeah. choosing of the way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I did it kind of like, um, you know, to be honest, I did all the panels first, got the panels made, and I just randomly uh, took pieces out of some of them, but then I had them all up and I said, I'm going to paint James Baldwin on this one. I'm going to do. Subcomandante Marcos on this one, and um, you know, like you know, with the Subcomandante Marcos, the one at the end, I right. wanted to paint uh, Tres Leches Cake or expose that piece where it's like a Tres Leches Cake because right. it speaks to him, you right? Know, and, right, and being from uh, or you know, uh, doing work in uh, um, Chiapas, and, uh, so it's just you know, little details that I was interested in and wanting to do that, mm. Mm. yeah. And then that's how it kind of evolved into just taking pieces and making these kind of works that are slices and what, you know, right, painting right. goes on. And so with these pieces are what I find, I'm sorry, I'm talking so much. <laughs> <laughs> what I find is that these pieces are like the way you place them, first of all. I thought they were, it was, it was great because you walk in and it's very festive downstairs yeah. with all the cakes, yeah, right? Yeah. It's almost like a display. Like yeah. here in New York, there was a, a, a bakery called Valencia's. Uh -huh. Okay, and I don't know if they were they sprung up elsewhere, but Valencia's. And my mother would always go to the to get the family cakes there, and I would go as a kid and look at all these cakes that I had been in the window for like twenty years. Wow. So I'm like, yo, there's like like that much dust on that. Cake. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so like a picture of cake like that, and it's just like this gray New York right. soot right. on top. Yeah. Of it. Like, no, <laughs> change the cake. <laughs> <laughs> But like to see these pieces, what they remind me more of, yeah. this is what I took from them, is time 
pass by. Like this is like you, the night, the day after the, the great party, right? And someone left the cake on. No one touched it. So I mean, is that is that definitely? That? I mean, the piece that you see upstairs, <coughs> the, uh, the United States cake, is that. It's like the after party or like oh. after the party. You know, it's just kind of like that. The red cups are scattered, you know, the balloons are kind of hanging low, and then, you know, the, the, <laughs> deflated. the deflated balloons, and then you got this American flag cake that's just kind of been, des you know, desecrated, and, mm. you know, slices are still there, no one wanted to eat it, you know, there's just like wow. two or three slices left. That's a great piece. Yeah, and um, I was thinking about that, because, um, you know, at my place, um, I like to have, you know, birthdays and host birthdays and, and parties, so, you know. But you don't I, bake. Was it? I don't bake. No. <laughs> <laughs> I just buy pizza and like all kinds of food. And, uh, but, um, People on Instagram think he, he he makes cakes now. You know, they're like, yo, <laughs> yo, I didn't know you. Were, I didn't know you were friends, you're an artist and a yeah. baker. Like, well, which one are you doing? My hey. friends said I haven't <laughs> talked to him in a minute. You know, they think that I'm like it's edible or something. I'm like, no, dude, it's a it's a painting. You know, so right. it's kind of you have to show people. Yeah. Okay. Then they kind of touch you. Right. Right. You know, it's like uh, it's, it's funny. It's funny. You use, use similar, um, similar uh, like supply, like uh, tools. I'm using all yeah, the tools right. that they would use to make a cake. Yeah, oh, really? Except, yeah. Well, just for the frosting and all that stuff. But, oh. You know, dressing it up. You know. Oh, uh, They use airbrush and, and, and but they just use like a food coloring or something right. like that. That's mm -hmm. edible. So mm -hmm. I'm just using you know the, uh, the version that's archival, I guess. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. They're beautiful. They're beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. And then, I, yeah, I was just going to, and, and you guys all ha have to take a look after. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, we're not in the, I'm not sorry we're not in one big box. Actually, I'm very happy we're in an old building that was constructed in 1849 that's still standing. Yeah, um, but after this, you'll have to walk up. But I wanted to talk about these urban uh, landscape paintings and about 20 minutes be before this conversation I was still uncertain whether Patrick wrote graffiti or or just like you know looked at you know outside of a school bus and, and you know you know in Los Angeles and just kind of looked at the uh, landscape or urban scape and then I was looking at um, at these paintings and I was thinking they're they're the they're the, per they're the perfect backdrops to be defaced, right? These these paintings in the streets are, are fair game. When they're when when they're in a gallery, they take on their own elements. So I was, and, and there are marks all over these paintings, and there are buffs all over these paintings, and uh, it's almost like if you know if you own a storefront or you own a bodega, and you come in the next day, it's always something new, right? There's always something new on the gate. Yeah. So I just wanted to, because uh, I, I I was thinking about this idea of like uh, inactive observer, which is not the case because he he, he did he, he did write quite a bit of graffiti, he showed me like like photos and stuff, and then I was thinking of inactive observer versus uh, active participant, right. you know. So 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 Patrick was 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 doing a lot of writing and mark making, but he was also doing a lot of observational stuff it was, um, yeah. right right yeah. and i just uh i just did you have a chance to, yeah, yeah i did okay yeah, yeah so i just thought you guys could wrap about um those those a bit and uh what it means to to have uh to, yeah. to have something that's fair game in the street yeah yeah i mean it's 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 weird because it's like you know like i was 12 years old i was doing graffiti i probably stopped when i was 20 21 but i understood like how it was a uh, you know it was adding to the landscape now I'm kind of like doing that but I'm doing it in a reductive form you know it's, it's like almost like uh, reducing your paint in water or something if you're using acrylic or something it's it's something you know like you're kind of like thinning it out but you're thinning for me it's 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 more like a reductive kind of like washing away of what was once there mm -hmm. and um, sometimes I use pressure washers to, to paint and then pressure wash because I'm interested in layering of, of some of these landscapes exposing what's underneath them um you know the graffiti or the mark making or just like a mural or something like that um what the neons could be striking because they come from advertising they're more about shouting you know hmm. these are not shouting they're like more subtle sometimes you know uh, we can get subtle with it and i i 
you know, I, I put layers on top of that neon, you know, like security bars and paint it out or, you know what I mean? So it's just, um, you know, kind of subduing that loudness of, the, mm. of that medium. Um, and then, uh, you know. Uh, we should collaborate on one as a, uh, the remnants of a cake fight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be, cool. be an yeah. interesting, like, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. No, they're beautiful. Yeah. They're, they're really beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I was, I was also thinking of um, this idea of, uh, of a friend, the art, artist Hank Willis Thomas, I think, made a neon called Remember Me, I think. I might be, I might be getting old and that might be wrong, but I'll have to check it when I get home. Remember me, um, and the, and these acting is as remember me. Um, but Pat, you know, Patrick's very keen on saying they're celebratory, mm -hmm. and um, but for for some they are in memoriam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, when I get home, and you know, I, I grew up in New York, so I I wind down. I watch the eleven o'clock news. Why I watch the eleven o'clock news, I'm not sure because it's not such good news to report at eleven o'clock usually in New York. But I watch it. Um, and then, and then you see, you know, you know, they remind me, and 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 maybe this will trigger some uh, some insight for this into, you know, when families like in in big cities, inner cities, lose loved ones, um, and they have they have a moment to shed light on on what's what's playing out at the moment. Um, they're wearing these "Remember Me" T-shirts, you know, airbrush T-shirts, right? And it's 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 the family, and you know, because it's like. It's like we're going to talk about our loved one, and we're also going to wear, we're going to wear stuff so the people Represent like them, me yeah. sitting at home make sure that that we remember them or remember me. Um, so I, when I walk up here, I, I you know, these, these are incredibly elegant uh, paintings to me, and they feel incredibly refined. But I do feel like they're rooted in the in the street, and I, I don't know uh, if you have anything. Oh to yeah, say. yeah, definitely. I mean, not only just color. And yeah, they're, they're like, um, sort of like altar pieces, you know, I look at them, you know. The icing, or whatever you want to call it, the, it, perfectly done, actually, you know, using those tools. That reminds me of the, it's almost like a neon, bringing attention, directing your focus to the, the eyes, the smile. And, and, and for, I mean, I see most of these, you know, it's funny about these, except for the two, they're the farmer and, um, yeah. uh, this is all struggle about America. Yeah. This is, a, you know, this has a lot of struggles going back to the Native American experience, you know, the yeah. whole thing. And it's, it's so, yeah, I mean, it's to represent their different narratives of America, you know, like, uh, yeah. to represent people that have these different stories that add to the fabric of America. And right. It's just something that I wanted to represent. And, um, in their portraits, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, it's definitely something I had in mind when I was painting that for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, th I think now might be a, as good time as ever. Uh, we, could, we could use some some help in the room. Uh, <laughs> I, I hope you guys are okay with that. But um, sure. but perhaps uh, some of you, some of you guys here with us uh, have some insights or some questions for Lee. Questions for Patrick, um, so yeah, f feel free to, uh, yeah, to <laughs> over here. Yeah, I'm, I'm here sitting here listen, listening to you. You say you wrote graffiti. Yeah. And Lee doesn't know me, but I know of him, and I yeah. know him. I looked up to him since I was a kid. I'm yeah. a graffiti artist myself. Yeah. I uh, go by the name of Coles TDS. Okay. I'm in the process of having an artist in a real short oh, soon. And this guy here, I looked up to him a lot. So I remember he did the Campbell Soup in the 80s, all these yeah. old cars. Yeah. And Lower East Side, the yeah. Campbell cars and stuff. And I'm sitting here looking at you, and I'm like, damn, he started with graffiti, and now he's doing portraits. And this is, I look at this, and I look at me, because I love reading. Right. I love to read. You know, I love about the Malcolm X struck me, you know, the Chavez, you know, the, the Native American guy. But, um... I guess that's what art is, man. Art is, is, is who you are. It's your perception. And, you know, I came here, you know, because I, I support the movement, you know, the art. Yeah. I love art. It's like a therapy to me. Yeah. You know, like, when I don't, I'm bored, instead yeah. of doing what I used to do, now I do my art. 
and it helps me out. You know, it helps That's balance me. I appreciate you guys. You know, doing a good Thank job. You. I appreciate you. Yeah, thank you. I got. Well, I'm a fashion designer. I got my own clothing. Okay. Room. And me looking at your artwork, that's historical right there. Yeah. That's something that you're never gonna forget. Because what you did, you put stuff of people that passed in a lifetime and went through stuff and put it like if it was on a cake that you can always remember. That. Right. So this right here is historical. You ain't never gonna remember. Um, forget this. And I appreciate the work. Man. I appreciate that. Man. Means a lot. Very good. Excellent. I just was curious. Um, like I noticed the it's red velvet cake for Baldwin, and I was just curious about Belle Like, what cake? What did you have a cake in mind for her? I don't know. Like something like, like a stra something sweet, like strawberry. a strawberry. Yeah, mm -hmm. with the uh, strawberry filling or something. And it was just a lot of it was taken from the palette of her portrait, like her red lipstick and just like the, the colors in, in her flesh. Like yeah. I, I know it sounds weird, but it's just, you know, when you're mixing all that paint, it's just like, oh yeah, this will work. And you know, um, that's what it was. Yeah, something something like that. Mm. Yeah. Well, the colors set mood. Yeah. 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 And uh, you know she she all she writes what she's what she's known for writing is about love and relationships mm. and how we um, you know we have a commune and community and all but it's it's all about love right that's the name of her book or the best selling one and I wanted the, that cake to to, to kind of have that color mm. that color scheme I guess. Mm. Yeah. Um, I really, I noticed the hats too. I really like that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that in California, I'm like sports cars or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. But I wanted to hear from both of you um, about your art education. You know, did you have, did you go to schools where there was an art teacher and you got to paint in school, or you know, I know you were outside of school doing your work, but what was your what happened in your early years, and how did you decide to stick with it? Um, I was lucky enough to go to a high school that had a, the second year of an art program, you know. So I was uh, in my, it was a public school, and it was a joke, really. Um, not that, you know, it, I, I still got something out of it, um, but thank God that there was an art program, right? So um, I didn't learn anything my freshman year. I think uh, my humanities class was like, the teacher was just trying to get everyone to chill out <laughs> most of the time. And they would just like throw desks off the second floor and just write. They're doing the feet, you know. It was like it wasn't too crazy, but it wasn't good, you know. And I remember he said, um, "Draw like a, you know, draw two posters for me during the semester, and you get an A." So I did like an animal farm poster, and then I think um, "Old Man in the Sea" or something, mm -hmm. and I got an A. You know? Wow! So that was it, and then. What class is this? Again? Humanity. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so then, um, our my art class was the last, my last period, and it was kind of just like, you know, like a festive art class because it was like last period of seniors, juniors, everyone's just mixed up. But um, I remember doing like, you know, because I was already doing graffiti by then, and we had to um, design a tape cover, and I made some dude break dancing on the cardboard I had. You know, all, all my homies hit up on the, you know what I mean? And I got like an A plus, and then she crossed it out, but A minus, too many gang connotations. I was mm. like, wow. <laughs> so they were, you know, and then mm. she was like, you know, that was my art teacher, you know, and she was very like conservative or whatever, maybe, I don't know. But then she told me about this art program that was opening up, and I had my black book. So you, you could only join if you were a sophomore. So then the next year, for some, you know, I was just like, cool. I showed it to them. They're like, "You're, you know, come in. It's all good." And then um, from there, that was a springboard because um, I was exposed to all these, you know, different types of, you know, making uh, sculpture, you know, out of like paper, paper mache, and you know, it was kind of like a boost or just like exposure so that I can get a head start on like things that I wanted to make. So um, that was like high school. That was high school. And then um, uh, before that, um, you know, I come from my dad's side. They're all drawing and painting. My grandfather painted and sculpted. My dad uh, was a photographer. 
he had his own black room, you know, like his dark room in his uh, apartment, in his uh, his bathroom. Um, all my uncles drew and painted. It's crazy. So, but when when I when I grew, you know, when I was uh, young, I was already doing um, drawing. I was already drawing at six or five years old. But um, uh, my dad was probably tripping out, like, "Damn, this is you know." He's seeing it in his in his grandfather or his his dad and you know his his brothers. And then fast forward to high school, I got that. And then um, I went to uh, City College for a couple years, and then Art Center in Pasadena. Hmm. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I've I've been drawing since I was about five years old. Yeah. And uh to what you said earlier, the the, the, the most uh the things that were most accessible to me right there at that time was a pen or a pencil and a piece of paper, a bag or whatever. And uh my mother was a homemaker, a sweet woman. My father was running shit on the street you know he, he was a guitarist he was a musician and um uh fast forward over to junior high school by this time i'm already painting trains but uh there was a lot of chairs and desks flying out the window yeah, as well yeah. and uh i failed every art class i could put myself into because i was painting trains and i didn't want to you know follow the the the, the line uh, with all due respect to, you know, uh, acquiring, uh, uh, what do you call it? academic achievements, you know, the people that I was introduced to in the, in the late 70s and 80s were all, you know, developed through their MFA and BFAs. And my running joke is I came up through the MTA. <laughs> so, <laughs> now, the University of the IRT, that's where I came from. <laughs> so, um, you know, it was, it was a fast track into, uh, you know, quickly, uh, you know, stamping yourself as I am this person within a alphabet soup of 50,000 other individuals in all age groups. Uh, and making a statement in the uh, the most loudest, fastest city in the world. So I untraditionally got my credentials through just being uh, resourceful with things that I did not have. I had to invent things. Uh, so and so did many, many, many others. But also, I would have to say that uh, the influences were. In the back wind were the many other artists that were either there saying push the envelope Lee, or indirectly or directly and and uh, that it was great to be part of that art class that uh, that was always in session you know yeah uh, so yeah <laughs> special comments are there any other questions yeah, I just had a quick question. Uh, um, when I look at the cave, like I feel like there's so much meaning that you derive from it, as far as like the frosting, the idea of self celebrating craft, mm -hmm. um, both businesses. Yeah, the, the cake, something that's shared, the communal, community. Yeah, yeah. that's section two. I was wondering if I know you've been doing these for multiple years. If as you do it, and you interact, and you react, react to people. If you find your motivation or maybe your aim or what you think it says changes when you do these pieces. You're saying that if, when I do these pieces, and you communicate with people and you talk to them and you see what they feel, if you think that creates something that you might bring into a new piece. Oh, okay. You, Specifically cake? The cake work? Yeah, because it's something you've done for multiple years. Um, yeah, I mean, it's... Like, the, you mean the idea of painting someone, like a portrait of? Um, I don't know. It's, 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 um, the spark always comes from some kind of, uh, if I've read about them or kind of uh, have known about them for a while and I wanted to paint them. I still have, like, a, another list of people that I want to paint. But I don't know if it's so much the reaction of, like, you know, 
painting a portrait and getting a, a certain response from it, and then it, it would uh, spark the next one. Being, may, maybe in some cases, but not. That's I guess not. That's not really what uh, I guess um, informs these pieces. It's just more of like a kind of like thing uh, where I I want to paint this person because I know about this person and I feel that they're you know um, someone that I want to paint. And th these people I think have a uh, pretty solid. Uh, moral fibers, I guess, in a sense, and it, it's something that, um, especially in these times, we need to be reminded of mm -hmm. these types of things. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's that's kind of what I guess I'm, I'm looking for, I guess, and, and um, something I'm striving to even, you know, be a uh, you know, better person is, is reading about these people and, and mm -hmm. seeing what they have to offer and mm -hmm. learning them that way also, you know, painting them. That's an interesting question by him because I thought that, you know, looking at Sitting Bull, you read about him, it's, you know, several centuries later, you yeah. know, that you're, you're, you're talking, seven, I mean, seven, you know, 200 years, whatever, later that his footprint is still in, you know, his, his stamp is embedded yeah. in our history, but, you know, is there anything that now in this common day, current day, that would inform, like instigate, trigger, like you, you probably, in other words, what I'm asking you is that you would say, wow, I really want to do a portrait of Sitting Bull. Mm -hmm. I, I understand, I'm, I'm intrigued by the history, but maybe it lays idle. And then something that you see or read mm -hmm. in the streets or hear from someone triggers because it kind of, kind of adds to... Like, oh, now there's a reason yeah, to yeah, roll yeah, this I out. Yeah, 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 I what you're saying. So, what you're saying. Yeah, in, in that case, yeah, it's a, it's a talk, uh, it's the language of uh, illegal immigrants and things like that. Like, you know, that that that's crazy. You know what I mean? There were people here before, um, you know, and that's really what it, you know, that kind of sparked that. Um, right. You know what I mean? Just to remind. And that's why I wanted to paint them in color, you know, because it's... Right not old, it's new, it's, you know, something that lives and breathes now, and it's like, remember that there were people here before, you know, um, all the, the, you know, laws and everything that you tried to, you know, that, that this line is, you know, California, and, you know, that line is, you know, you know, Mexico or whatever like that. Right. Man-made type of uh, right. things. But he's, he's representing an indigenous pe people that yeah. were here. Yeah. If anyone, the invaders were the immigrants sort of, you know, coming in and taking. So it's, 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 yeah. So I have one more question. Does a Paca um, have a neon sign? What? What consideration did you have to present that in English as opposed to? English? Yeah, so it's crazy because I was talking to my girlfriend about that, mm -hmm. and I was, and I had both in mind, and it was, um, it it would, I have, it's weird, I have the the drawing at home, and it's it's in Spanish, and mm -hmm. and sometimes I'll do that in Spanish because especially in LA, the neons come yeah. so many different languages, right? Depending on the pocket that you're in, especially I'm sure it's the same in New York, but you know, in Alhambra or San Gabriel Valley, you'll see it like, you know, um, in Monterey Park, it's, it'll be like, you know, Chinese, mm -hmm. um, Spanish, uh, you know, like um, East Los Angeles or something like that. Um, I, I'm probably going to do the, the Spanish one too, you know? So um, I just thought that it would have more impact in, in, you know, in English out here, mm -hmm. just so people can understand it. And it could be maybe the sister version later on that comes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody else just have some questions that they just absolutely need to ask and we can help answer? All right, well, uh, yeah, thank you guys. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, Patrick. Thanks to all of you guys.